अगर आप एक कोच है कंसल्टेंट है कोर्स क्रिएटर है और एक एजेंसी ओनर है देन ये वीडियो आप लोगों के लिए क्योंकि इस वीडियो के अंदर हम एजेंसी के बारे में बात करने वाले कंटेंट क्रिएशन के बारे में बात करने वाले मास्टर माइंड के बारे में बात करने वाले कोचिंग कंसल्टिंग इंडस्ट्री के बारे में बात करने वाले और बहुत ही तगड़े इंसान को हमने इन्वाइट किया था जिनका नाम है ब्राइन मोनकाटा जो कि मायामी से और सबसे बड़ी बात क्या है कि वो सैम ओन्स के पार्टनर है यूट्यूब ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के अंदर और वर्ल्ड के टॉप टॉप नॉच जो कंसल्टेंट होता है कोचेज होता है उनके साथ उन्होंने काम करा है और अगर आप लोगों को जानना है और सीखना है तो इस वीडियो को पूरा एंड तक देखना क्योंकि इस वीडियो से इस पॉडकास्ट से आपको बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिलने वाला है हे ब्राइन व्हाट्स हैपनिंग मैन हाउस अ गॉन डूड एक्साइटेड टू बी हियर हैप्पी फ्राइडे हैप्पी फ्राइडे मैन आई एम सो एक्साइटेड फॉर दिस इंटरव्यू बट आई एम नर्वस एज़ वेल सो माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज लाइक uh most of my audience uh, does not know you uh, as you are from miami so can you brief about yourself little yeah next? 100% yeah first of all well thanks for having me again i'm excited to be here and uh yeah my goal today is just to deliver as much value as possible and, and share more about my story and hopefully it inspires somebody else um long story as short as possible i basically uh got my start in the marketing uh, digital marketing space specifically back in 2018 uh that summer i actually went to go work for dean graziosi full time and uh while working for him i was able to learn how to write copy direct response marketing from the ground up uh run ads on youtube uh you know basically how funnels worked um you know affiliate marketing a lot of these different uh assets that I know you talk about on your channel as well and help your uh, amazing audience with I learned all that while working for Dean for about 3 years mm -hmm. and through that time and experience I was able to go from someone who didn't know anything about digital marketing or mm -hmm. at least how to uh get clients um from ads from cold traffic where they don't know you to get them to know like and trust you and then obviously uh convert into a client of yours um and that allowed me to add value to deans companies and brands and help him scale his his brands and company um with youtube ads which is what i i was really specializing in at that time mm -hmm. and then i took that skill and i was able to uh start my own advertising agency which is adspend.com which is what what i do now and i have my team and um and we help other you know basically seven and eight figure personality brands scale and get more clients and customers uh with youtube ads as well as other ad platforms on the back end too um so that's a quick quick synopsis as short as possible yeah amazing amazing so uh my next question basically is you have worked with such a big uh, names in the industry like sam owens and a cole gordon so just wanted to know you have approached them uh for work or they have approached you yeah so you know having worked for dean for 3 years it really allowed me to establish myself pretty pretty significantly when i first went off to do my own uh build my own agency um i just leveraged that as uh you know social proof for cuz I, i was spending you know millions of dollars with youtube ads right so mm. you know a lot of the big name clients that you mentioned right now that they, they always you know when when they hear the the numbers that we were spending uh that i've you've been used to managing um mm. it was very easy for them to to want to work with me so for sam specifically to answer your question um you know that happened recently that happened this year that happened in basically march of this year so it was pretty fresh and how that happened was i joined sam ovens quantum mastermind uh right. in february i believe february end of end of february beginning of march and i was able to attend the first yeah it was in it was in end of february and i joined the first i attended the first quantum mastermind that i ever been to in march mm -hmm. in la this was his first quantum mastermind back since mm -hmm. uh covid and everything and uh everybody at that mastermind wanted to learn about youtube ads and sam had never run youtube ads um but he knew his audience and his clients were interested in it and he knew that I joined quantum because we had a one on one when I joined and he asked me about what I was doing and and what I needed help with at that time and uh, he knew that I ran youtube ads for you know obviously back when I worked for Dean full time I ran ads and worked with Cole Gordon you know ran ads and worked with Frank Kern 
ran ads and worked with you know companies like Digital Marketer, Kajabi, consulted with them, right? Founder consulted with them. So all of that just made him realize that like, oh, well, my audience wants to learn about YouTube mm -hmm. ads. So why don't I just have Brian teach on it? And mm -hmm. so he had me teach about the mastermind. Um, and then uh, after that mastermind was over, he wanted to launch his WeTube mastermind, which was mm -hmm. teaching coaches and course creators how to start a mastermind. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was going to be teaching YouTube ads. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to him doing it himself, which, you know, if you know anything about Sam, he's all about efficiency and optimizing and, and having fun. Mm -hmm. So he didn't want to have to learn it on his own, didn't want to have to do it on his own. He was like, why don't I just have Brian teach it again? But this time, to this new mastermind that I'm starting as a coach or as a partner with me. And so he basically approached me and said, Hey man, I have an idea. Um, can we talk? And I said, sure. And then, uh, he called me up and he told me what he was thinking about doing. And he asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. He told me exactly what that would look like. It made total sense for me. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And, uh, I partnered with Sam ovens shortly after that. And we launched WeTube, and it's doing really, really well. Um, clients love it. They're getting amazing results. And, uh, and that's how I got the Sam partnership. Um, so basically to sum it up, I joined the mastermind, introduced myself to Sam. I already had credibility and social proof and experience. He liked that about me and he liked how passionate I was about it. And he said, well, why don't I just have you do it? And that's how that happened with Cole. The same thing. Mm. I actually joined, this is before Sam, I joined Cole's program, sales team accelerator back in 2021. So okay. this literally this uh, beginning of last year, so like maybe January of 2021, and um, and at that time I, I was I was going to Cole to help with more sales uh, for our for our team and for myself, and then he started his mastermind and he's like, "Yo, you should be a part of it. Do you want to speak?" And I said, "Yeah," and and I already I already was helping him with his own YouTube ads, consulting with him and his in-house media buyer. So him and I were texting every week, having a call a week, and uh, he just trusted me, just like Sam trusted me, and they knew I was talking about. And they said, "You know, yeah, dude, like uh, you should help me." And then they paid me for that, obviously. And uh, yeah, man, I guess I guess to sum it all up, it's just like you know, knowing what knowing like being really good at what you do, right? Being able to be willing to serve and help other people uh, to actually get them results without really being like too, oh, you got to pay me for that because you know I'm 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 me and and I I deserve this. Yeah. I was just leading with value first and being a good person, and everything worked out as a result. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So uh, Brian, I have seen that you invested a lot in masterminds. And in recent video, I have seen that you have invested $68,000 in mastermind, which is like call golden mastermind, right? And yep. what is your biggest takeaway? Because 68,000, you can buy a home, right? And <laughs> yeah. So just, just wanted yeah. to know, I'm very curious to know that what is your biggest takeaway from that particular mastermind? Yeah. So it's actually funny. I made a video on my YouTube channel recently that says, you know, I, these are the big, the big top takeaways I learned from these masterminds. Right. And I had my, my, uh, accounting team that I started working with two years ago, actually calculate, um, how much I've spent in masterminds for myself, for my team. And it was about 150, 156 or 160 something thousand dollars. I think it was 156,000. And it's funny because I, I I share that, and you know, last year we did seven figures with our agency. This year we'll do uh, w more than that, and and it's like a direct correlation of ten xing the amount of revenue. Like we our, our revenue is ten x the amount we've invested in masterminds. If that makes sense, mm. so like there's a direct correlation of ROI and growth and mm. scale mm. if you invest in your business, coaching programs, right. courses, masterminds. And um, for the $68,000 one specifically that I just attended this past weekend and that I'm a part of, uh, this is I, I just renewed with Cole Gordon's mastermind actually for another year. Um, you know, my biggest takeaway overall from this specific mastermind is the way Cole Gordon operates his company. And it's a true company. It's a true operational machine. Mm -hmm. And I think most businesses in our space of digital marketing, they're more lifestyle businesses. And that's fine, right? Most people dream about having the opportunity one day to hmm. be able to make ten thousand dollars a month from their laptop, working from anywhere in the world, and being able to travel and explore new places. And I was that same way as well. Hmm. Um, and and I did that, and I was able to make you know thirty thousand dollars by myself per month 
mm-hmm. as a digital nomad traveling and running ads for clients mm-hmm. like the ones mm-hmm. you mentioned and having a really good lifestyle. But there also came a point where I asked myself, you know, how long is this going to last? How long do I want to keep doing this by myself? Is this sustainable? Mm. Is this the way I want to go with my future? And I and I said, no, I want to build an actual company. I want to build, uh, I want to have a lot of impact. And to do that, I want to be able to help more people, not just myself. And so I share all that to say that Cole Gordon's mastermind specifically, the way I, I sum it up for Cole, it's basically like a million dollars a month. When you join the mastermind, your goal is to basically uh, get to a million dollars a month because everyone in there is making a hundred grand a month, right? Mm -hmm. So $68,000 to them is basically less than one month of revenue, which is still a good amount of money. You could Mm -hmm. buy a house with that, but I guess it depends on where you're at, right? So for me, I'm 28 years old, right? I'm not 22 by any means. I'm not as as young Mm -hmm. as I used to be, but I'm still young and I'm still able to take risks and I'm still able to double down on my business right now, as opposed to putting that Mm $68,000 into a house somewhere that's not going to be Miami because you can't buy a house with $68,000 in Miami, at least a good one. You have to have a bigger down payment. And mm-hmm. so for me, it's like, I'll just keep investing in the month, the number one thing that's producing revenue and growth for me, which is courses, coaching, and masterminds, being able to get around the right people, mm-hmm. introduce myself to them and learn these top takeaways. Cause I can then use that information to give it to my clients that I'm also running ads for. Mm-hmm. So it helps them scale their businesses. And as a result, they help me scale our business because they get great results. They tell their friends, we mm. get more clients. Mm. Um, so the biggest takeaway from Kohl's is he runs it like a real company and his operations and his team are all dialed in. And being mm. around that and learning from him has been really cool because it's all about sales and sales team and operations. Mm. And those are the three things, sales, sales team, and operations. Mm. And when you dial those three things in and you have it be efficient and, and a real, well-oiled machine, mm. you can get to a million dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. All right. Uh, so, uh, Brian, what do you think investing in a hyping mastermind is worth it? I know you answered that you will say yes, it's going to be worth it. But why? Right? You can find all the information on YouTube, Google, but why? Yeah. Well, the only reason why I started investing in masterminds in the first place was because when I was working full time for Dean, Hmm. uh, he would always tell us and his clients, I owe all of my success to masterminds. He would always tell us that. And at that time, being 22, 23, you know, Hmm. working full time for him and wanting to aspire to have more, Hmm. I asked myself, okay, how do I become more valuable? to mm. Dean, to the company, to add mm. more revenue, to bring more marketing, to to acquire more skills, to add more leverage for myself in Dean's vehicle mm. so I can make more money, right? Mm. And so I kept hearing that and I was like, I'm going to join a mastermind mm. because Dean says he owes all of his success to masterminds and Dean's you know, someone I aspired to be like at that point, right? And I said, okay, I'm going to join a mastermind. And so I mm. went out and found a mastermind. Uh, it was actually Vince Del Monte's seven figure fitness business bootcamp mastermind. Mm. At that time, just to be truthfully honest, I was trying to still reignite my fitness brand, mm. which was just me documenting my personal fitness journey online. I've on YouTube, seen that, actually. your video, um, um, your very first video is around like fitness videos and all. Yeah, like eight years ago, eight years ago, or maybe almost 10 years ago now. And that was when I was a a senior in Arizona State University in college. Mm. And that's how I wanted, I wanted to use my story, my birth condition to aspire other skinny, you know, uh, guys that didn't feel comfortable in their own skin. I have have seen that you have some uh, chest related problem, right? Yep. It's called pectus excavatum or pectus excavatum, however you want to pronounce it. It's basically where my chest, right? It's indented. So mm. there's like a, there's an indent. It's like someone took an ice cream scoop right out of the middle of my chest or, mm. you know, God did the universe did whoever you believe in. And, and, mm. uh, and I wanted, and, and growing up, I was obviously very self-conscious about that. Mm. I, you know, as any, as a young guy would be. And so, mm. you know, I was able to build muscle and build confidence as a result in the gym. And anyways, I started my fitness journey, shared it on YouTube and mm. I joined Vince's mastermind. Cause I was like, if there's one guy I can learn from in the fitness space, it'd be Vince. Because mm. I used to always follow him and how he did it. Mm. Anyways, I go to Vince's mastermind and I'm there. And the first thing he says to me is, uh, I introduce myself. Hey, I'm Brian uh, Moncada. I, I run YouTube ads for Dean Graziosi. If you've seen his ads, that's that's me helping him. Um, but I want to start this fitness business, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, I'll tell you right now, man, you should cut off the fitness stuff. 
Mm-hmm. And that was like really shocking to me. But that's at that mastermind, he he gave me the light bulb moment to say, hey, mm-hmm. dude, you're so good at this. Everyone in here wants that because they don't know how to do that. You could mm-hmm. sell that as a service and build an agency and and really have an easier time to be able to build authority and credibility. Mm-hmm. And then down the road, if you want to still do the fitness stuff, you can. And so anyways, I share all that to say, going back to your original question, mm-hmm. why masterminds, you know, like you know, yeah. Why is it so, why do I keep investing into them? Um, cause that was your original question, right? Yeah. So, you know, the mastermind that I joined was the light bulb moment that gave me the idea to start adspend.com in the first place. Right. It showed me the idea of what's possible if I just went in on it. I trusted the, the mentor's advice at that point, Vince's advice, and mm-hmm. it's worked out. And then I just kept doubling down on that. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of information that's online for free. Yes, you're right. A hundred percent. Everyone watching this right now is watching this for free. But what you won't get is the networking that comes with joining a mastermind. Because when you join a mastermind, it's that in-person or virtual experience where you get to talk with the other members, share ideas, collaborate with one another. And essentially, you're paying to join a group of friends that also are on the similar path to where you want to go. They're working towards achieving the same goals as you, and you're all holding each other accountable. You're all sharing and collaborating and inspiring others and yourselves and your friends to also achieve that goal. And it's more fun that way too. As like nobody wants, I don't know about you, but I know me, I don't want to just be in my own like room all day long, crouched over the computer, just I'm just talking to myself, like unhappy, like Mm. not getting out there and connecting with other people. I'm a people person, right? I like Mm. to go meet with other people. That's how I get my energy. And so, yes, you can find all the information potentially for free, Mm. but there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of details that aren't given away for free by most people, which is why when I make my videos for the masterminds, I try to give give a bunch of value away, everything that I'm learning, because that's the stuff that you can't get online for free. That's the stuff that you have to pay $68,000 to learn, because guess what? The person who's teaching you that isn't going to share that with you if you're on a free YouTube video most of the time. So Mm -hmm. I would say the reason why you join it is to number one, be surrounded by other people that are on a similar path, just like you. Number two, to actually get the behind the scenes look of how to do the things they're teaching you. Mm -hmm. Because most people just give you the what, they don't give you the how. And -hmm. then number three, it's having fun too, while you're on the journey. And that's what most people overlook. They say, oh, masterminds, like, I just don't think, I think it's still a fresh concept that most people don't understand, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I get it. So basically, it's all about mindset as well, right? You build your mindset and mastermind. Uh, Brian, uh, there are a lot of options in the market, like Facebook ads, Twitter ads, LinkedIn ads. Why YouTube ads only? Yeah, so that's a good question. We, we've we primarily been a YouTube ads agency, and we've been YouTube ads specialists for the last two, two and a half years, almost three mm. years coming up in March mm. since we went, uh, since we started full time with the company, mm. uh, adspend.com. And it was because it was a blue ocean, right? Nobody was teaching YouTube ads. Nobody was running YouTube ads. Nobody really was the category king mm. of YouTube ads. And it was still a very new thing for most coaches, course creators, and info product business owners. They were all running Facebook ads. And so I was really the only person that I knew of at that time, besides one or two other people that was really branding themselves as the YouTube ads expert, the YouTube ads specialist. Mm -hmm. And so there was just a very massive blue ocean for that. Um, And because it's a harder platform to crack, think about it. Mm -hmm. You have a big YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you, it's taking you months, years, tons of videos, hundreds of videos to be able to get to where you are now, right? Like being able to put the time, the effort and the energy in. And now people respect you. They watch you. They love your content. And with Facebook ads, you can throw up an image, you can write some copy. And if it's a good offer, it'll potentially work. Right. Mm -hmm. With YouTube, it's all video, right? right? You can't, you can't, you can't get away with the shitty video. You can't get away with the shitty creative. You can't get away with the shitty script. If you're not excited about your offer, if you're not excited when you're talking to the people, they're going to feel that through the camera lens and they're going to skip or they're Mm -hmm. simply going to waste your money because they're never going to convert, right? So Mm -hmm. it's also a higher barrier to entry because you have to film a video, which Mm -hmm. makes makes you have to become a better marketer. And nowadays you have to be because everything's video, right? Mm -hmm. Like 
people right. trust you more when you're on video if you're willing to be on video. And so mm -hmm. why YouTube ads for us the last two and a half years was because nobody was really doing it. Nobody knew mm -hmm. how to do it. And me coming from the best person that I was running ads for, which is Dean, mm -hmm. who's used to filming ads on infomercials, where I got to learn from a true master marketer and take those skills, boil them down into a repeatable process for our clients to follow that allow them to go from not running any YouTube ads, not being that great on camera, to being able to film ads with confidence and conviction, to get mm -hmm. their message delivered that converts to cold traffic, to get new leads, calls, and clients, right? Like that's that's a very high ROI skill that I have and my team has that we can deploy into any business. And as a result, they'll pay us a lot of money to do it because we can help them scale to 100K a month plus in mm. just YouTube ads, 100K a month with just YouTube ads, not including what they're doing with Facebook ads, which is a huge value add, right? It's an extra seven figures a year. So, mm. however, with that being said, right, there has come a time now where we are branching off more on the back end with our clients and we're we're adding in TikTok ads, right? Because mm. our process isn't just YouTube oriented, it's mm. direct response marketing that mm. can apply to also other video platforms mm. as well. Mm. 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 Makes sense. Makes sense. So Brian, from where you have learned the Facebook ads? So I have seen a video with uh, Tommy Powers. Uh, yeah. So he tells about the three C campaign, uh, nay, creative campaign and conversion. So what is your take on this? Yeah. So Tommy's a beast, man. I learned a lot from Tommy powers. He was actually the very first person that, uh, essentially coached me. He was my first YouTube ads coach mm. when I was working for Dean full time. Um, and I met with him for a long time. He taught me a lot and my thoughts on Tommy and the three C's are, I mean, everybody has their own unique spin, right? Mm. He has the three C's, creative, mm. campaign, mm. conversion. Convert. It all starts with the creative, right? Which mm. is very, very much the truth. If your creative mm. sucks, it doesn't matter how good your offer is, nobody's going to click, right? So your creative has to be on point. Mm. And the creative is the hook, right? The story, mm. the close, because you need to hook them in just like a YouTube video. What's the first five to 10 to 15 seconds to get them to continue watching mm -hmm. all the way until they're in, all the way until the end of the video, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's the story? What's the story you tell them to make it relatable to what you're trying to teach them, right? Because most people learn from stories, examples, metaphors, analogies. So you're telling them some sort of story. Maybe it's about you, your journey, your struggles. Maybe it's about one of your clients. All, all those elements go into the creative plus the call to action, right? What do you want them to do? You want them to click on the ad to go to the next page to learn more about your offer. So that's the creative, right? So 100% Tommy spot on there. You need the creative first. Then you have mm. the campaign, right? So the campaign is basically on Google ads. It's a mm. video campaign and you have a bunch of things inside the campaign. You have obviously the settings of the campaign, the type of goal you want to do, whether it's conversions, leads, calls, whatever, sales. And then you have the bidding strategy. What type of bidding strategy would you want to use? Do you want to use max conversions, target CPA? Mm. If you don't know what any of these things are, mm. don't worry about it. It's it's mm. it's actually pretty easy if you're used to running ads, but it's actually easy to set up, right? Mm. And then you have, you know, inside the campaign, you have what's called ad groups. If you're mm. used to running Facebook ads, they're mm. called ad sets, right? Right. Same thing. So ad groups, inside the ad groups, you have your ads, right? So your ads are usually where you put inside the ad groups and you have those in the campaign. So that's the campaign you have the targeting inside. And that's what you use to run the creative onto YouTube ads. So the campaign is a big, big piece as well, because it chooses your targeting. You choose your settings, you choose your goal, you choose, you put your ads in there. And then finally you have the conversion, right? So the conversion is obviously the next big piece in what's called like the marketing tripod, because your creative can be great. Your campaign can be on point. But if they click and then they land on your landing page and your landing page sucks, mm. right? It's not optimized correctly. Well, mm. they're not going to convert into a lead, right? And mm. it, let's say they do convert into a lead. They do opt in with the first name, email, phone number, but right. then your VSL isn't persuasive enough. It mm. doesn't emotionally get them to want to take up your offer, book a call with you to learn more, solve mm. their problem. It's it's not emotionally appealing to them. It doesn't get them to take action. Well, now that's going to mess up your conversion because your leads are good, your creatives are good, your campaign's good, but now they're not converting into yeah. a call or a client. So that's a huge piece as well, your funnel, right? Yeah. The way you nurture and, and get people to trust you and then actually 
you know, actually book a call or buy whatever you're selling. So the three C's are very important. Tommy does a great way of explaining those. Um, and all of those are very important. It's a whole system in itself when you mm -hmm. think about it. Mm -hmm. So Brian, there is a big, big, big update in the market about YouTube ads that YouTube removed uh, placement keywords. People are getting crazy about it. So do you want to throw some light on it? Yeah. So it's a huge update that was mm -hmm. never something that I expected to happen, but it's crazy. It's happening and it kind of makes sense. So essentially YouTube ads were very, very powerful and exciting mm -hmm. to use before for most people, because there was a lot of marketing around, you can use YouTube ads to essentially hijack your mm -hmm. competitors traffic or customers, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. you can run ads to mm -hmm. YouTube videos that you want your ads to show on. You can mm. choose the specific videos you want your ads to show on. You can choose the, the specific channels you want your ads to be placed on. So whenever someone watches a specific video, your ad would come up first. Or whenever someone watches a specific channel like your channel, someone could be just advertising on your mm. channel because mm. they, they want your customers, right? Mm. Now, also with keywords, right? I could, I could use a keyword of law of attraction and I could then mm. run YouTube ads to the law of attraction and videos that have topics around law of attraction. So mm. very specific placement targeting, right? Mm. Now YouTube ads have removed that type of targeting, right? So a lot of people are upset. However, it's ultimately a good thing because what this means is now everything is becoming more AI algorithmic based mm. targeting, being basically meaning that, you know, there's a new type of essentially audience that they're wanting to push, which is custom segment audiences, okay? Custom segment audiences. And these are mm. audiences that you can put in keywords mm. and create your own custom audiences. So mm. if someone's searching, for example, there's three types of custom segment audiences. There's custom search, mm. right? Which is basically custom intent. Someone's mm. searching something on Google, right? Right. For example, how to run YouTube ads. Mm. I could put that keyword into what's called a custom intent or custom mm -hmm. search segment mm -hmm. audience, just right. that one keyword. And now my ads on YouTube will show to somebody else who's mm -hmm. typed that keyword into YouTube or Google recently. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Makes sense. So then you have custom uh, affinity or mm -hmm. custom interest, which is basically typing in different topics or interests related to your offer or your audience. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then it creates a much bigger pool of people right? Mm -hmm. You can type basically like Facebook interest audiences. Mm -hmm. And then you have custom websites, which is where you can actually type in websites that mm -hmm. you know your audience would be visiting or people that are mm -hmm. similar to your audience would be browsing. And so Google says, we'll find more people just like this website and people that visit this website. So that way they mm -hmm. can show your ads to them as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the three types. And I think it's better that way because it's a much broader audience and targeting. Mm -hmm. However, your creative now has to be on point, very direct mm -hmm. with who you're targeting. Otherwise, you'll spend a lot of money and not reach the right audience. So your messaging, as it always comes back to mm -hmm. the copy, mm -hmm. is always the most important piece. The creative is mm -hmm. always the most important piece, especially nowadays with this targeting option. So mm -hmm. um, that's the basis, that's essentially the update. And that's that's uh, the big news that uh, everyone's going crazy about right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, Brian, my next question is... Uh, <laughs> Like you have partnered with Sam Owens for VTU. So how's your experience uh, with Sam? And what is a major thing that you have learned from Sam particularly? Yeah, that's a good question. Sam's an amazing dude. Um, I've, I've learned a lot from Sam. If I had to boil it down to one thing, hmm, that's a tough one. Sam, here's what I will say, and this is going to be cool for everybody to start seeing more mm. because of his new podcast. He just released the first episode this week of his new podcast on his YouTube channel. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's a cool it's a cool inside look into Sam now because you have two to three hours of him talking to somebody else mm. and, and, and you get to really just see how he is like as if mm. you were talking to him yourself, mm. which is going to be amazing because what I've learned from Sam is Sam is just like you see him on the videos. However, he's even funnier, even more hilarious in person. And I'm excited for everybody else to see that on the podcast as his videos start getting released because everyone will like, know, and trust him and fall in love with him more. Um, however, what I will say, the big takeaway I've learned from him is focus is a big thing. And so, for example, right, you know, he's all in and focused on building school mm. to 
a huge, huge, you know, basically impact on the world. Mm. And mm. he's only focused on building school. Mm. And that's one thing that I've learned from him recently that I need to apply more to myself because someone like me, uh, the way I'm wired is a little bit different. Like Sam's very introverted, right? Mm. I'm very extroverted. Mm. So there's a good balance there. Like we, mm. we contrast each other out. And he's also very uh, thinking where I'm more feeling. Mm. I go off the vibe. I can feel the vibe of the room and I feel... Mm. And I, I usually adapt and make everybody. I can I can control the vibe, right? Mm. Whereas he is more thinking and overthinks a lot, right? And he mm. he admits this as well. Mm. And so, I think that my strengths are his weaknesses, and his weaknesses are my strengths. Mm. So I take those strengths from him that he has that I'm weak at, and I always learn from him and how to implement those better. So. I guess it's like, number one, I have to be able to focus better. Meditation helps with that a lot. Uh, he meditates 20 minutes a day. I've okay. started meditating 20 minutes a day because, you know, that's how you can really start focusing more every single day by just shutting out the noise, mm. paying attention to one thing, which is your breath. Mm. Um, and you can apply that to, in your business as well, where you have too many things going on. Some people mm. right now watching this video have they're trying to do way too many things. They're trying to do, you know, YouTube organic. They're trying to do Twitter. They're trying to do Facebook. They're trying to do LinkedIn. They're also trying to cut a bunch of clips from their videos right. and post them on Instagram, TikTok, you know, mm. all these different things. Plus, they're also trying to have this product, that product, and then that product. They're trying to sell to everybody. At, and, and there's just too many things going on, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas I think the person who's going to win nowadays, like I'm seeing from Sam, is the person who just zones in on one thing focuses on making that product the best mm. thing that they could ever make mm. and then really just focusing on that for like two to three years whereas everybody's mm. else just trying to just jump from this thing to that thing to this thing so a big thing that i'm doing right now with our business is like cutting a lot of waste mm. reducing a lot of inefficiency right becoming mm. more efficient as a result and focusing more long term on what's going to really drive the needle for our business so that would be the biggest thing i learned from him mm. amazing love it so, Brian, uh, what do you think? Uh, what is the future of masterminds? That's a good question. The future of masterminds. Well, I mean, I feel like it's only natural that eventually it'll get to a point where maybe. Well, that's a good question. What is the future of masterminds? Yeah, so far, I mean, masterminds have always predominantly been in person. Mm. But I think I think masterminds will become a better way to sell courses and coaching, just like Sam has proven with WeTube, mm. because the product WeTube itself isn't a coaching or course program. It's it's essentially a mastermind. It's incorporating mm. a yearly recurring uh, revenue mm. into a co co course or coaching program. Mm. Um, but in the future, I think it'll be a little bit more virtual and digital. Mm. But there will still be an in-person element. So, mm. for example, right? Um, some masterminds, they're all in-person four times a year, every quarter, right? So you have to travel mm. once a quarter just to go there. And mm. that's great. However, I think like for Sam, for Quantum, how he runs his mastermind, it's 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 there's one this weekend, literally. It's it's virtually gonna be this weekend over Zoom. Mm. Um, and then there's two of those per year, two virtual, two in person. I really like that balance. I like to travel uh not as much as much as I used to. Um, and so I really believe masterminds will be probably the best program for people to sell because it yeah. also incentivizes you as the creator to update the course content because you want people to keep renewing with you and stay in the mastermind. So instead of just a 16 week co coaching program where they mm. get in and then if they don't get the results, they can't stay in because they got their 16 weeks and they're out, right? Most people will kick them out, unfortunately, or most people just don't, don't get the result because it's too condensed of a time frame. Whereas mm. the mastermind, it's usually 12 months, right? Mm. And you have a, a, a sprint of like, let's say 90 or, or 90 days or 120 days, 12 mm. weeks or 16 weeks. And that's when they can get the result. But then you're also in there for three more times, right? So it's also a better model, I think, for the client mm. and for the creator because it incentivizes both people to participate as well mm. as update the content. Um, mm. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I think that the mastermind model will be more, more mainstream, especially in our space, at least mm. in the next mm. year. 
because mm. people will be wanting and craving more of the community. It's all about the community, right. man. Right. The community is what makes masterminds the most important piece here. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a good coaching program. Obviously, you want to get them the results, but people stay for the community. They stay for the collaboration. Hmm. Correct. Makes sense. So, Brian, uh, if I if you have to choose one thing, your agency or mastermind, which one would you like to run for a long term? <laughs> Yeah, so that's a good question. I actually talked about with Sam about this on his podcast that should be dropping this month. Um, and you can hear me kind of talk about everything I was just sharing about how we have too many things and, and we had to condense it. And then we, I, I was like, I already know what I need to do. And he's like, Yeah, it sounds like you already figured it out. I was like, Yeah. Um, what's 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 awesome about what we do is I I really do love running the agency. I really love running the agency because we get to do it for the client, right? We get to take them. We get to take running the ads off their plate, relieve that stress for them, help them scale their business with my specialty and my unique capabilities. And mm -hmm. where we are is we're only working with a handful of clients at one time mm -hmm. and we're charging percentage of profit too, right? So mm -hmm. we have incentive to scale the clients as opposed to getting more clients and scaling our company, mm -hmm. right? Where the service diminishes. So I say all that to say that I'd run both and we're going to be running both. We're going to have our mm -hmm. agency that's going to be very, very select few amount of clients, 10 clients, it, that's each, that, uh, that's that's it, no more than 10. And we have a lean team, high profit margin, plus we have the mastermind, the admin mastermind for any, any coach, course creator, or agency owner who wants to learn how mm. to scale their business or their clients' businesses with mm. YouTube ads. And then eventually... Mm. TikTok ads, Facebook ads, everything that we're doing for our clients, mm, we're teaching mm. those strategies and mm. those ads, uh, creatives into mm. the mastermind. So like, it's the best of both worlds because we're doing it. We're spending millions of dollars every single month. And then we're also teaching what we're doing that's working in the mastermind. So if you want to do it yourself, you can learn from us and then obviously we'll help you in the mastermind, but you can also take what we're doing and apply it to your own agency and help it and help your clients scale further and faster by mm. taking and learning what's working from us at our agency mm. and applying it to yours. So it's kind of cool because in our mastermind right now, we have agency owners that want to build an agency just like we have. And we're teaching them mm. client acquisition. Mm. We're teaching them how to get referrals, how to build their personal brand just like I have, how to mm. go into mastermind just like I did and get clients and become mm. the, the mm. YouTube ads expert or the Facebook ads expert at that mastermind and get clients that way. But we also have coaches who have a high ticket coaching program that are using our YouTube ad strategies. And it's this really cool community now that agency owners and co coaches and course creators are combined and they're all learning one thing how to scale with paid ads, which is what we do best. Direct response marketing for the info marketing businesses with mm -hmm. YouTube ads, direct response specifically. So those are the two things I'd run because now we can work with a handful of clients at the agency, clients that I would love to work with and I mm -hmm. do love working with. And then we have the mastermind. We can share that knowledge and teach it and then once we have the mastermind, we can do in-person events. Mm. So at the end of next year, we'll have our first in-person event during the fall. We'll bring everybody out to Miami uh, once the mastermind's a little bit more filled up. And we'll have a three-day in-person event where we can uh, hang out, you know, go on the boat, a yacht here in Miami, take them to the places around here and have a good time. Mm. Amazing, man. Amazing. So, Brian, uh, you become a brand, basically. I've seen that. You don't have a large following on your social media. So just wanted to know how you approach the client, high paying clients and how you close it. Okay. I see. How do I approach the right high paying client? Then how do we close them as a client? Yeah. 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 So, well, I've done really well building the personal brand, right? I've been posting content consistently for, uh, for the last two and a half years about what we do for clients, how we help clients, the strategies we're learning, as you just said on the YouTube channel now as well. Mm. Um, so my personal brand, although it is small and very niche, is mm. very high quality. I'm mm. really well known in the space that we're in specifically um, because of the connections and networking I've done. Mm. So that helps a lot when it comes to acquiring clients because whenever someone thinks about YouTube ads, one of the names that gets tossed in the hat is, is definitely me and adspend.com. Mm. Mm. And so mm. getting referred to clients is always an, uh, a, a very consistent thing for us. And mm. um, closing those clients really just comes down to, you know, clients, they, they just they just need to, to know three things, especially if they're high paying, right? And mm. they're really legit. 
They, mm. they need to trust you. That's the biggest thing. And they mm. can't trust you unless you're actually someone who's trustworthy, mm. meaning that you're not trying to hide anything. You're not mm. doing anything sketchy or unethical. And mm. you're also just not in it for the paycheck because they can get someone to or basically anyone to run their YouTube mm. ads. Like, mm. you know, Sam, Cole, Frank, Kern, all these, all these big name industry leaders and legends, they can have anybody help them with ads. Anybody would be dying to help them with ads, mm. right? But how I've positioned myself pretty well in my opinion is being someone of value first and like for example just this past weekend i was at cole gordon's mastermind mm. and you know someone was asking me how do i work with you and i was like well you know first let's make sure i can actually help you before we talk about if i can even help you or not or if we want to do that because mm. i don't know what your current situation is and so he was actually running youtube ads and he was like yeah we're doing this this and this we're struggling with this this and this you know, I'm not too sure what to do next. That's why I would love to work with you. And I was like, well, cool. Let's do this, man. How about you just give me access to your ads account first? I'll mm. spend my time going through it so I can actually see, number one, are you actually struggling struggling with something that you know mm. I can solve mm. for you? And number two, if it's an easy fix that I can just give you, I'll just give it to you. And mm. then if you still want my help, obviously, we can take it off your plate. But let me mm. just see if I can actually help you first. So I'm delivering value. I'm leading with value. And mm. I'm not trying to just go for the sale immediately. Um, mm. So that's one piece. The other piece is the offer, right? Obviously, it comes down to the offer, right? Mm. Alex Ramosi, $100 million offer. Mm. Selling YouTube ads as a service is a commodity, right? And mm. they can go find YouTube ads from anywhere. So what we do is we position ourselves as growth partners, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, we're not a typical agency that just has a bunch of clients and they're 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 focused on client acquisition as opposed to actual client fulfillment. We work with 10 clients at a time, which means we're a boutique advertising firm that specializes in mm -hmm. scaling clients, not scaling our company, so that we can actually make more money with one client as opposed to 50 or 100 clients, right? So it incentivizes us to work with them and their business. Like also just this week alone, one of our clients had trouble because they didn't have appointment setters calling the mm. leads that were driving with YouTube ads. Mm. Most agencies would say, "Hey, man, you need to get, you need to solve this problem." Mm. Where I'm, I'm saying, "How can we help the client solve this problem?" And mm. now I'm posting on my social media, looking mm. for appointment setters for my clients. Here's the mm. offer. Here's the mm. niche. Here's who they are. Here's the pay. Mm. Who's interested? Mm. And then I'm having mm. people reach out to me. I'm interested. I'm, and then I'm sending these 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 applications mm. to my mm. client. And I'm saying, here, I have a list of ten people that applied. Here's the best ones that I saw. Let's interview them and let's get them on these leads immediately. Mm. So now I'm helping them solve mm. problems in their business related to the sales mm. process. That's not just the agency, right? So mm. that's why we're growth partners. So it's the position, positioning of our of our company, mm. and it's the way we do the offers. So we charge a base service fee for the service plus mm. percentage of net profit, right? Mm. And we have guarantees on both of those. Mm. So it makes it a real no-brainer offer for the client because there's no risk for them. Mm. Mm. Cool. So Brian, uh, what is your ultimate goal and vision? Like, what is your ultimate goal? Where you want to reach? What do you have to think for your life? Yeah. So when I think about my ultimate goal and my ultimate vision, it's funny. Um, if you asked me this question before, you know, where I'm at now, I kind of already have it, which is bad because I've already achieved what I used to think was unachievable or I used to dream about. Mm. But nowadays, my ultimate goal and vision is more of just service. Mm. And, I, and I know that sounds cheesy, but I want to be able to make a big impact on the world by being able to by being able to help more than just myself. Now, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, it means first with my team because mm -hmm. I want all of my team to be able to be financially independent and free mm -hmm. and be able to love what they do and have to be, have the have the ability to provide for their family, just mm -hmm. like I've been able to recently provide for my family as well and really help them out. Mm -hmm. But also to be able to share what's allowed me to become who I am today, but also who I'm going to become in the next mm -hmm. five years. Right? Mm -hmm. I think the best part about building a business is. Mm. being able to level up as a person as well. It's kind of like if you've ever played the game RuneScape. I don't know if anyone here has ever played the game RuneScape, but in the game RuneScape, you acquire skills, right? You have, right. you know, you have fire making, you have wood chopping or uh, yeah, wood chopping, you have uh fishing, you have mm. uh magic, you have all these skills you're acquiring and leveling up your player character, right? Mm. Whereas me, I'm trying to level up my skills now in leadership mm. and communication and management. And, mm. and all these things that I can now teach on my YouTube channel and build a real community. 
build a solid, you know, group of admin or fit professionals, mm. whatever you want to call them, by mm. passing down the personal traits that I've learned along the journey and am mm. learning along the journey to help mm. raise the awareness of more young hungry guys and girls that also want to achieve something similar. So my mm. end goal for my life is I want to be a New York Times bestselling author. I want to be a public speaker who shares on stage in rooms of thousands of people where I'm just inspiring and, and sharing everything that I've learned, just like on my YouTube channel, but at scale. And mm. to be able to do that, though, I got to be someone who's interesting and someone who's actually building something that's worth value, which is why adspend.com is always and has always been the vehicle to build the authority, to build the proof, to build the the social you know, recognition, mm. because without that, you know, mm. nobody would care. I'd just be somebody who's trying to help people, right? And and mm. I haven't done anything. So I have mm. to continue. So the net immediate goal is build adspend.com adspend to eight figures with the mm. agency, with the mastermind. Mm. Um, and that's the next challenge for us. So that's going to require us to level up as a team and as me as a leader. Um, and then obviously leverage that to then really go into the personal development route, which is what I've always been passionate about, which has always changed my life online education, right? Teaching people what we've done and how they can do it too, just like we're doing right now inside the mastermind. Mm -hmm. Brian, uh, I know entrepreneurship is not easy at all, right? Uh, entrepreneurs goes through like anxiety, depression, everything, every phrase. How you handle such situation in your life? Well, I'm still figuring it out, to be honest, dude. I mean, <laughs> I uh, there, there's never a day that goes by still where i don't think i'm not doing enough where i don't think i'm I, where i'm not upset that i'm not where i want to be where i'm not nervous anxious mm. stressed or worried at least temporarily because i feel like that's natural for 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 entrepreneurs right you're always trying to achieve more do more i remember i heard uh the definition of an entrepreneur one time um i'm actually going to try to see if i can find it real quick basically one of the, someone told me the definition of an entrepreneur and i thought it was just so so spot on. Um, and I'm going to try to pull it up real quick while we're doing the Zoom. I think I have it real quick. Um, it was basically like how entrepreneurs are never satisfied with where they are. Right. Uh, it, it's it, it, <sighs> They always, always want more, more and more, more. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always wanting more, more and more. Um, and, and and we always beat ourselves up for it too. I think is a weird is a weird thing, but we're never going to be satisfied. I think that's always the biggest thing that trips most entrepreneurs up. It's like it comes. It all comes back to expectations, right? Mm. Like, what are you expecting to happen when you achieve a certain revenue goal? Well, I can tell you, my first goal when I was doing door to door sales before I worked mm. for Dean, mm. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. I thought a hundred thousand dollars a year would change my life. I'd be rich, right? Because mm. that amount of money seemed impossible. And when I did that while working for Dean, I was mm. like, okay, I did it but I wasn't happy, mm. right? I was mm. still not fulfilled. Mm. It was just, it was cool temporarily for a day. And mm. I was like, damn, I did it. But then it was like, what's next? And mm. I think it comes back to the expectation of what you want to expect and what you're expecting. So for me nowadays, the way I, the way I think about how to stay in the zone of gratitude is really mm. being thankful for everything that I've learned along the way, my family, my friends, my team, the, the networking I've been able to do, the, friend, the, the relationships I have. Um, the, the lessons I'm learning along this freaking journey called life that are just, oh, it's fun, man. Like, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people take life too seriously. Life's supposed to be fun. This is a game we're playing, right? Like I said, if you played RuneScape, you know that it's a, it's a, it's an MMORPG, right? It's a massive multiplayer online role-playing game. And I, I would truly believe that I'm a character in this world. Like we all are characters and I'm trying to level up. And that's the best part. I don't have all the answers. I'm never going to have all the answers. I'm just mm. going to try to do my best every single day. Mm. And I'm going to try to just take it day by day, right? And have fun along the path. And my expectations are, I'm going to be there. Time just hasn't caught up yet. Mm. I already see the vision. Everything I've visualized in my life since the moment I started this journey has come to life. Like it's happened. Mm. But the problem was I wasn't thinking big enough. And mm. so now I'm thinking pretty big and it's mm. I can see the end goal. But now I'm just trying to work backwards, but I'm doing the actions today that are going to lead to that end goal. So if you're too hard on yourself, stop being. Just know that nobody has it figured out. Even the guys that you look up to, they're mm. still figuring it out themselves. And they're still waking up sweating, mm. nervous, wondering if they're doing the right thing, wondering if they're making a mistake. It never goes away. Mm. 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 So Brian, last question. 
so basically i have seen that you are a married person right yeah yeah so i am also 28 right now and i also feel ki someone has to have in your life you have lot of anxiety and everything happening in entrepreneurship right so i feel something ki i want someone in my life who can listen to me who can uh, hold me right so just just wanted to know your experience with your partner how's your married life and how's everything is going on it is a good part or what because i am not married i don't have any experience about it i want yeah. to at uh, after 1 2 years uh, maybe i'll do it but how is your experience yeah so i met my wife during covid when the world was well 2 months before covid shut the world down we went on our first date and then our on our second date i remember we were having sushi and we were looking and there was a new the news was playing on the tv at the sushi restaurant saying that this airport lockdown this country wasn't accepting new travelers and i was supposed to go to bali in a month to travel for about a month and a half and she was like yeah have fun and i obviously couldn't go cuz the week later everything shut down um but i met her during a time where i was just starting adspend.com full time after i left my previous job and so i had to be focused i couldn't be messing around anymore and prior to that i was having fun dating around really having a good time as a guy and uh you know that was fun but i also knew i just was wasting a lot of time and energy and mm-hmm. i wanted uh someone i could share my life with someone i could share these these this awesome journey with mm-hmm. and since meeting her dude my life has been so much easier in all the best ways because i wouldn't have been able to do what i've done so far not that i've done much if i hadn't have met her and committed to her and met, and then just said look let's just do this because i knew she was the one within the first within the second date like mm. she checked off the 10 boxes that i had for like must haves in my ideal partner mm. and um i was very clear on what i was looking for which is a big thing most people don't know what they're looking for in a partner they're like it'd be nice to have somebody mm. dude i i'm a, a fanatic of personal development so i read a bunch of books and i one of the books that i read that changed my life was how to be a 3% man mm. and this book teaches you how to write down everything you want in your ideal partner. Mm. And I wrote down about 30 things. And then he says circle the top 10 things that you cannot live without cuz not everybody's going to be perfect for all 30, right? But mm. there's going to be 10 things that you can't live without that you're going to be able to find. So I mm. circled my top 10. She checked mm. off all 10 boxes by the second date. Uh we had a really good time. We liked each other a lot obviously. Mm. We fell in love pretty quickly and I was like let's just do this, right? Commit first, figure the rest out later. Grant Cardone taught me that. Mm. And And then I, we we got married uh in Laguna in California um during COVID when everything was shut down on the middle of the beach mm. uh or by the beach I should say and you know shortly after that we I scaled my agency to seven figures in that in the next year because I was focused on the business mm. um and you know she she takes care of me she helps us out a lot she she takes care of 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 me like she really does she she helps with the house she helps with you know a lot of the cooking and everything that we that I am just not the best at She literally mm. takes so much stress off my life and she always is so supportive. Um mm. and, and I love her. Like she's helped me out so much. She's helped us out so much and it's not easy there by any means, right? I'm only almost 3 years into this. This coming June will be our 3-year mm. anniversary, but I mean, it's a good book to read on this that I'm actually reading with my wife right now is The Five Love Languages. Mm. the five love languages this is going to help out a lot of people watching this right now because there's different love languages everybody speaks a different love language nice. so you have to figure out first what's your love language right what's the love language that fills up your cup and then also you have to learn how to speak your ideal partner's love language because if you're just because you get you accept love a certain way doesn't mean that they accept love a certain way so you have to be able to speak that person's love language to be able to fill up their cup to have a happy marriage or a happy relationship and right. so it's it's a constant choice mm. to love the other person and you're 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 choosing that because yeah it's a choice man i mean there's always going to be you know there's a lot of things about people right now talking about like other stuff so it's it's been fun man i've uh i've learned a lot through this process as well how to be a good husband um what not to do as a husband <laughs> how to not be a good husband as well at times and um mm. it's it's another personal development lesson that you have to learn i believe Mm-hmm. amazing man 
this interview is super super informative i love it so yeah we are wrapped up and brian to be very honest i love this interview this is the best interview till the date i have done hell love yeah it, dude man. i appreciate that man i had fun dude yeah आई होप गाइज आपको इस वीडियो से बहुत मदद मिली होगी बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिला होगा अगर आपको इस वीडियो से बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिला है जस्ट कॉमेंट डाउन बिलो लर्निंग मुझे पता लग जाएगा अगर आप कॉमेंट करोगे लर्निंग और आपने इस वीडियो को एंड तक देखा है जो जो नीचे कॉमेंट कर देंगे लर्निंग तो मैं मान जाऊंगा कि आपने वीडियो को पूरा एंड तक देखा है अगर आपके सौ से ज्यादा लर्निंग के कॉमेंट आए ना तो हम ऐसे बहुत सारे पॉडकास्ट लेके आने वाले इंडस्ट्री के टॉप लोगों को इन्वाइट करने वाले हैं द डी डी शो के ऊपर एंड लेट मी टेल यू गाइज मैं और बड़े बड़े क्रिएटर्स लेके आ रहा हूँ इस शो के लिए तो मुझे सौ कमेंट चाहिए और दबा के वीडियो को शेयर करो लाइक करो और अगर आप चाहते हो कि मैं आपकी मदद करूँ आपका खुद का मास्टरमाइंड लॉन्च कराने में देन हमारे क्रिएटर रेवोल्यूशन को ज्वाइन करो जहाँ पे मैं आपकी मदद करने वाला हूँ आपका खुद का मास्टर लॉन्च करने में नीचे लिंक है कॉमेंट में भी आपको पिन हुआ हमारा कॉमेंट मिल जाएगा वहाँ पर क्लिक करके आप अप्लाई कर सकते हैं आई होप गाइज आपको ये वीडियो पसंद आया नीचे जो आपको रेड कलर का बटन दिखाई दे रहा है क्लिक करो स्मैश करो चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करो बेल आइकन जरूर दबा देना अगर आपने बेल आइकन नहीं दबाया तो ऐसे फ्यूचर में इन्फॉर्मेटिव पॉडकास्ट आप लोगों को नहीं मिल पाएंगे सो गाइज थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो एंड एज ऑलवेज एंड एज ऑलवेज कीप योर जोश हाई और हाँ एक और चीज़ बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट कभी भी किसी का इंटरव्यू कर रहे हो ना तो अपनी जो माइक की बैटरी है ना उसको फुल चार्ज रखना अगर डाउन हो गए